House hacking, probably the best way to get into your first house and how you can use that strategy to buy your first short-term rental and probably a bunch more after this coming up next. Welcome to the Cashflow Happy Hour Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Baldovino. And on this show, you can join us live as we interview investors and share how they are increasing their cash flow. So grab a drink and let's get into it. What's up, Cam and Nicole? How are you guys doing? Good. How are Good. you doing? Good. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I think you guys are probably maybe the fittest couple I've had on the show yet. <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate that. Um, before we dive into it, tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you guys got into real estate investing. Yeah. Um, Cameron and I have been married for a year and a half. We've been together for five years. Um, we, well, I'm originally from Oregon. We met when he lived in Oregon and then we moved to California about six months into our relationship. So four and a half years ago, almost five years ago now. And then we bought our house that we're in right now, our primary house that we house hacked back in November, 2020. And then we bought our short term rental in September of 2021. Um, and now we're trying to figure out how to get our next property. Okay. Super cool. I guess my quick question then is who convinced who to get into real estate investing? I think we were both on board, but I think the house hacking thing was definitely me. Nicole did not want roommates for a while. And then we ended up living with my brother and his fiance and she liked that. And so we decided to, to run with that strategy. Okay. So that was a, how did you convince her by the way? Well, I, we, when we were looking at houses, I think I didn't have to convince her so much that after living with my brother and his fiance that she was like, this isn't as bad as I expected it to be, you know, the roommate situation. And then when we were looking at properties, we just compromised on things. Like she wanted a walkable neighborhood where I could have been in an older neighborhood in, in our area that maybe didn't have sidewalks. Um, and so we just found areas that we wanted to compromise on that made it um, a happy situation for both of us. Okay. And for those who don't know what house hacking is, can you explain that and break it down for them real fast? Yeah, house hacking is when you own a house or multifamily, any type of situation where it's a housing unit, and then you rent out a portion of it, um, and that portion can vary based on your comfort level. You rent out a portion of it, and you make money that way. So for us, we do a rent by the bedroom um, strategy where we live in the master, so we have our own private bathroom, which was another one of my uh, non-negotiables. I wanted my own my own bathroom. So we live in the master and then we rent out our other five bedrooms to um, other people. Sweet. And so was the plan always, I guess, how did you guys decide on doing the actual real house hack, not a duplex, triplex, fourplex? Like what was the, let's just get a big house. We started looking at duplexes and there's just not much inventory. Not a lot of inventory, high prices. Also the neighborhoods they're in, like Cameron mentioned, like we have two dogs, which might make some noise later on so you guys might see them but um <laughs> we we have dogs i really really like taking our dogs for walks i wanted to live near a park i wanted to live in like a family friendly neighborhood and most of the time duplexes and triplexes multifamily are not in those types of neighborhoods so that was another big portion too is like the single family home gave us the backyard we were looking for and the walkable streets and close to grocery stores and kind of those things that we wanted and so renting out the other bedrooms seems like less of a um, compromise than living in a neighborhood I didn't want to. And we didn't start out looking at a big house. We started looking at like a three, two. And as we were running the numbers, we're like, wow, we're going to pay way more than we pay currently in rent when living with my brother. And so it just slowly grew. And then we were like, well, we need at least a four bedroom or a five bedroom. And then we <laughs> put the, a six bedroom. Okay. So let's just, I mean, can we dive right into the numbers? I'm just curious on like, as you guys were calculating, you guys live in Sacramento. Yes. Just north so of like, Sacramento. Let's just say like the average two bedroom apartment, right? Would be how much? The one we lived in rents now for 2,600 a month. Okay. And so then, I imagine 1,800, 2,600, depending yeah. on your area. And then, so then you guys bought a six bedroom house for how much? 535. Okay. And then I'm sure you've also put a little bit of, I saw, and Nicole showed me pictures that you guys put a little bit of work into it. Um, and how much you guys spent into, re uh, into renovations? We've put about 10, I'd say so far. Okay. That. You think a little more than that? Yeah. The, we turf. Have, the turf was 3,500 and then. New fence. 
Yeah, new fence. Yeah, so we're probably like closer to 15. Yeah. And we plan gotcha. on putting in about another 30. 30. Yeah, we'll put another 30 or so. Okay. And then, so your guys' mortgage PITI right now is? 3,000. A little less than 3,000. Okay, so three grand. And then you guys are, it's a six bedroom house. So you guys have how many? You guys have five housemates? Yes. Well, well six. Six housemates, but we, five bedrooms. Yeah, we have a couple. So six people all together. And then how much are you renting them out for? Anywhere between 800 and 1050. And that includes utilities. And then mm -hmm. it includes, we have a, a cleaning uh, person that comes through twice a month to clean the common areas. Landscaping. And landscaping. And we provide all the uh, toiletries and cleaning supplies. So you guys are cash flowing like two grand a month, maybe 2,500 a month. I'd say after all the expenses come out to be like another thousand bucks. Okay. So about 300 bucks without CapEx. You guys are cash flowing 300 without CapEx. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Cause of the, of the range, all the utilities and everything. Yeah. Cause we okay. pay for, I mean, it's a, it's a huge house and we pay for all the electric, all the gas, like everything. So it, it can add up, especially during the summers when we're running the AC. Yeah. But you guys are essentially living for free with your parent, oh, with your tenants paying down your mortgage. Yes. Correct. Nice. <laughs> that's the goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's amazing. And I guess, you know, my question is, you know, for anyone thinking about house hacking, like as you guys are running the numbers, is there a better way? Like, can you probably the most efficient way is to do it, not the most comfortable way, but the most efficient way is to do it by the room, right? The most profitable way, yes, is to rent by the room because anytime you can divide a house or anything up into smaller units or, you know, anytime a, more people are paying a portion of something, you're going to make more money. So it is the most uncomfortable way because there's eight of us that share a kitchen. So mm -hmm. there's eight of us that share a backyard, eight of us that share a living room. Like it's a lot of people sharing a space, but if you find the right tenants and I mean, like we're calling them tenants here, but they're our friends. Like these people are our friends. We've, you know, we're friends with them. Like they know that they're our friends. So if you just find the right people to bring into your house, it can be a really comfortable situation. Okay. Well, I guess let's just jump into the first question. So how do you handle so many housemates? Like one, how did you find them? How did you vet them? Do they know about this from the get go? Because you guys do post on social what you guys are doing, and yeah, your name totally. is House Hacking <laughs> Masters. <laughs> yeah, all of our um, again tenants uh, follow us on our house account, so they all know like everything that we're doing. And then um, three of the people that we live with, so there's six total people that are not us. Three of them I used to work with. So before we even bought the house, I was uh, every party we go to, I was wheeling and dealing, trying to get people to commit to living with us. So I think four months before we bought the house, we were at parties and I was like, hey guys, looking to move in the next couple of months. And I was just asking everybody if they wanted to live with us. And so we got, cause it's a huge house. And so we had this mm -hmm. really big fear of like, who the heck is gonna wanna live in a six bedroom house with all these people? And so I was very fearful that we wouldn't be able to fill the rooms. And so we started off with four people that we knew. Um, and then one of those people doesn't live here anymore. And then the other three came, you know, the organic way through Craigslist. Um, Roomies.com is an amazing website for anyone looking to do a room share, um, whether you're a roommate or an actual person trying to rent out your room. It's almost like um, Tinder for roommates. Like you can mm -hmm. see a profile picture of them. It says, you know, if they have cats or dogs or what they're interested in and you can like swipe through their profile. It's, it's a really cool, um, it's a really cool website. And as a landlord, I get to see people, I get to see people's profiles and also what they're willing to spend. So if you are thinking about doing this in your area and you're like, I have no idea what people would rent, rent their room for. It's always good to see, you know, what people post their rooms for, but you can actually see what the roommates look like, what type of people they are and uh, how much they're willing to spend. So roomies.com is how I found two of the people. Gotcha. Well, that's a good pro tip. I'll uh, link that as a banner right now, roommates.com. And... Roomies. Room so roomies. there is, there is a roommates.com, but this one's roomies.com. Is that just R-O-O-M-I-E-S? Yep, I-E-S. Yeah, you can pay to like boost your profile, but I've always just used the free version and it's incredible. Yep, roomies.com. Okay. It's it's my favorite website for sure. Not sponsored, I guess, huh? <laughs> not, not sponsored. I mean, but I don't pay for it. So I might as well give them free advertising. They don't make me pay for it. So. Okay. And so you mentioned that you tell them from the get go that you let them know 
kind of why you're doing this. How does that conversation go? So I think that you can kind of tell just even from a lot of it starts from the very beginning. Like I, my post is way longer than other people's. Most people's post says like one bedroom for rent and it has two pictures of the bedroom and maybe a picture of the outside of the house. And that's like it. Ours is like 35 pictures long. It's every single space in the house. It's a description probably this long about like the type of people we are, um, what we do for work, what we like to do, what the other type of people in the house are. So you kind of get the vibe from the very beginning that this is, done with intent and done with purpose. Mm -hmm. And then when I talk to people on the phone, because so far everyone's been, everyone's within 10 years or so, like a, a pretty similar age group. So when we talk on the phone, I say like, Hey, you know, we bought this house with the intent to rent out our rooms. Um, so, you know, everyone else in this house is, is just like you, like they originally started off not knowing anyone either. So it feels like, you know, it is a big house. There's a lot of people, but you know, we're all kind of coming from the same place. We're all doing this to save money. And I even say that I'm like, it's a good situation for you. You can save money. Like it helps us pay down our rent. So I mentioned it from the very beginning on the phone. Gotcha. And then I guess my question is next, as you break down, like there's not, you know, there's few people on social who like are very transparent about numbers. And it seems like yeah. from your short term mental that you guys started, you're like the same too. Is there ever a conversation when they're like, Hey, wait a minute. I really see what you're doing here or does that ever not really because i mean people like we we talk really openly about how much our mortgage is i mean they also see like all last weekend we were out in the sun shoveling rocks like they see mm. how hard we work and like what we do around the house to make it a nice place to live and like we pay for all the soap and all the paper towels and all the toilet paper and all the like pans like all the spices like we pay for a lot so we put a lot into our house and i think people can see that and so it's a pretty open conversation from the very beginning. Um, and like some one of our uh, roommates right now, like she is now uh, what, every time one of her coworkers buys a house, she's like, can you believe they're not going to get roommates? Like, why would you not want roommates? And then two of our other roommates are going to buy a house of their own in the next year. And like they're going to get a roommate to help offset the cost. So everyone that we live with sees what we're doing and understands why we're doing it. And they saw us buy these short term rental. Like they lived here with us when we were buying that house and went down to Joshua tree to fix it up. So everyone's been like very involved in the process and it's just like, we're very honest about it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's good. I don't care. Any other thoughts about, you know, talking about no. investing with your roommates at all? <laughs> no, we have not talked about that. What? Oh, investing, investing with our with? roommates. No, we haven't really talked to, I mean, we've like talked about partnerships a little bit in, in concept, but not with anyone. Like specific. We're not really like bringing them on as partners, but like, oh, here's what we're doing. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. You talk to, there, there's people that we talk about like mindset books with or like investing with and stuff like that. Is yeah. that what you're asking? Yeah. 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 I mean, so, and I guess my next follow-up question is now, I mean, you've seen the success with it and you've built out systems or it seems like a process in order to get, you know, good quality housemates in. I guess it is the plan to do another house hack again or? That's the plan. We are in the process of renovating our house so we can refinance and then see if we can qualify for another primary, probably same size house and do it again. Yeah. Okay. Same area? Yes. I'd assume so. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then why... I guess, why did you pivot into the short-term rental and not just kind of bulldoze your way into the next That's house? Very good question. <laughs> we wanted to like scale a little faster, I think. And we saw with uh, the house hacking, you have good cash flow, but short-term rentals seemed like they also had good cash flow. Mm -hmm. And so it was a way for us to get into the market. And initially we planned to be at a much lower price point than we purchased our short-term rental for. Wow. And so we were, yeah, so we were looking at, you know, at 29 Palms in the $200,000 range, you know, and then we were getting outbid and then we looked in the 300s and our realtor was like, listen, if you want to have an opportunity, you probably need to bump up into the 400s. And that's where we ended up looking. So okay. we, were, we wanted to use it as a, a way for us to scale. And that's the plan is hopefully it boosts our cash flow and gives us more opportunities to uh, buy more properties. Yeah. So how, I guess, you know, kind of in summary, how did house hacking set you guys up to be able to get your first short-term rental? We, es we essentially saved um, on top of, you know, what we were already saving, we were able to save an additional thousand dollars a month, thousand fifty a month that we set aside and um, our reserves here kind of thing. So we built up our reserves and used what was left mm -hmm. uh, with um, the use of other funds to have the down payment and the money to renovate that house. So it, boosted us, you know, about what 
$9,000 by the time <laughs> we got there between closing on this house and then closing on the Joshua Tree house. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, house hacking, I don't know if you consider living, moving back with my parents is house hacking, but I guess, you know, we're helping pay down their mortgage so in a way that it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> I know I made a post about it where we ended up living with them. It was supposed to be for a couple months. And then, you know, my dad and I had the sit down conversation. He was like, you want to buy a house? Just live here for a little bit. It's and always so supposed to be for a couple yeah. months. That's yeah. how they can always start. No, I mean, that's a great, a great way to do it. We don't live close enough to family to, to take that opportunity. But if we still lived in Oregon near my mom, we probably would have considered doing that. Like, I think it's a great option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, I mean, whatever you can do to cut those expenses and just dump everything else into cash flowing. At the time, I thought I would save all this money to buy a primary. But then as you just look at California prices, especially in the Bay Area, I was like, I can't justify spending 1.5 for a house. Yeah. Yeah. We got just, in at a good time with our house here. Um, 535 is a, is an amazing price for this house. Like without any fixes right now, it'd probably mm. be worth like seven seven twenty or so without any changes to it. So we we got in at a good time. Well, like, so then you guys saved some money. The next thing was either you guys were thinking about the next house hack, but let's pivot into your short-term rental. Before I show them what your short-term rental is, uh, why did you guys pick the Joshua Tree area? And why short-term rentals? I think we like the idea of short-term rentals, one, because we like to travel, and two, we like the prospects of the cash flow. I think that was the big thing. It was like way better than getting $100 a month or $200 a month somewhere else, because at that point, we're like, well, we could just buy something, uh, another, we could buy a property out of state or something. Yeah. Um, and as far as Joshua Tree goes, we wanted to be somewhere we could drive to. So we were really focused on looking in like Nevada and California. And we ended up selling across Joshua Tree and then uh, looking to the numbers. They looked good and, and just ran with it. Okay. Have you guys ever been to Joshua Tree before? Not until we went down there to meet our realtor for the first time to look at houses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, me too. Actually, I didn't go down there until after we closed on the house. Really? Oh, yeah, I have only bought and thing sight unseen. <laughs> really? Yeah, we, yeah. we put in our offer sight unseen, but we went down during um, our inspection phase to look at it. Yeah, that's, I mean, good. I mean, I, I don't know one thing about fixing a house. So, I mean, I could hang a shelf, I guess, but you know, <laughs> that'll be it. Um, okay, so and then you guys picked Joshua Tree just because of the numbers and you're looking at it. And obviously, it's the park's beautiful, it has a very chic, kind of hipsterish feel, right? Um, how about building out the house? Can you break down real quick what went into everything to set it up? We went down there. So it, it's an eight hour drive. Like Cameron mentioned, being able to drive to it, you can drive to it, but it's an eight hour drive. So it's not like a hop and a skip away. Um, it's far enough away that we had to really come up with our systems. So when we went down there, we wanted to make sure that everything was set up to where we wouldn't have to come back or like babysit it. Um, so we decided to do renovations. Um, it, it was definitely more of a cosmetic fixer. Like there wasn't anything big that we did, but we did cosmetic fixes. Um, we painted the whole house. We did that ourselves, which was, oh, wow. uh, yeah, it was a lot of time. time. I'll say time. It was a lot yeah. of time, but it wasn't hard. It was just a lot of time and a lot of short sore shoulders Ooh. and like back pain, but we got it done. Um, and then we redid the guest bathroom. Uh, we put up a fence in the backyard because it's a really large backyard, but it was all a chain link fence, which is really common up there. So it didn't feel private at all. Um, so we put up the fence, which was about $8,500. Yeah. So the fence was pretty expensive. And then the bathroom ended up being like five. Yeah. A little bit over 5,000. Um, and then the paint was pretty inexpensive because it was just the, the actual materials itself. Um, and then we, little things like the fireplace we painted, it used to be just a brick color. We painted it a dark gray. Um, added a new mantle. Yeah, added a mantle. I think those are like the big things. It really wasn't a lot. It was just, uh, it was enough to make it look like brand new. Because if you see the old pictures, it just looks like it's a very, just like normal looking. I think it was built in the 70s. So it's just like a normal looking 70s ranch home. So the kitchen looked like that when we bought it. We just bought a new fridge for it. It had like the old white fridge. So we bought a new fridge, but otherwise it didn't touch the kitchen. 
And then there was, uh, there was just like old blinds everywhere, like old crusty blinds that we took down. So just small things that made it feel like fresh and clean. And there are things like the ceiling fans. I wanted to switch out all the ceiling fans in the bedrooms um, just because I don't love the way they look. I wish they were a little more modern, but it wasn't mm -hmm. worth the money because they're fine. And did you guys hire a designer or who did this? Um, I did it. <laughs> I like it. No, I mean, it looks, yeah. I mean, and then you guys also designed the bathrooms because this tile yeah. is fun. Yeah, that's the shower that we, we didn't physically do the labor on this one, mm -hmm. but that's the shower that we redid, designed, pick up, picked out the tiles for the glass door, all of that stuff. So that, that bathroom has new fixtures, new mirror, new lighting, new everything except for the toilet and the floors and the vanity. I like it. So Thanks. for this property itself, uh, you okay if I uh, dive into the numbers a little bit? Yeah, of course. Okay, so how much did you guys purchase for? 405 405 rehab for oh man I don't 15k know. even like a ballpark 15 yeah it's like 15 15k to, 15 to 20k yeah and then how much to furnish uh 15 to 18k oh that's good yeah we were all in at like 80,000 between closing costs down payment renovations and furnishing really good we are all in at like 135 or something like that. Yes. I know. Ash, we got to stop with the CapEx too if you're watching, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but you guys, it, it, it looks gorgeous. And obviously I know that we were talking because we were going through the same kind of permit pause right yeah. together at the same time. And then you guys were actually the ones that convinced me to do a midterm rental while we were waiting in the interim just because, man, we were just, we were just bleeding cash at that point. Yeah. How did that work for you guys? Did you find a midterm renter? renter? We did. We ended up putting on it on, on Airbnb. Um, and I, I didn't put on first final. So just Airbnb, I, I made it 30 day stay and we got a whole bunch of inquiries really quick. Um, and then a lot of people asking for discounts. Yeah. Um, and then we ended up, actually, I think we accidentally just gave someone an offer because on the app, it's like next to the, approve guest and send offer yeah. like those buttons are really close um so i think that's what happened but anyways we got someone in for like 3800 for the month which wasn't nice. a bad rate do you yeah. know do you know what your person was there for like why they were renting for that many days um i don't know specifically other than she just wanted a retreat for a month and that's kind of yeah. all i left it as but it was just a single person interesting your house is so big i know i didn't and yeah I don't know. Um, and how about you guys? Who, who ended up renting your guys' house for a month? We had a an older woman that was having a house built in uh, hot, Desert Hot Springs. Okay. And so it's a new build. And so she was supposed to be there for like four weeks or five weeks. It ended up being like nine weeks. Because it just kept getting pushed out. And okay. then, she kept asking, could I extend yeah. my stay? Could I extend my stay? Which every time we're like, yep, sure can. <laughs> like, please do. So she, I mean, she really carried us through. Because she booked um, her first day to Sorry, started December 8th. I think mm. we went live on like November 11th or something. So we went a whole month without getting, we had a couple inquiries here and there, but the day that she booked, I was, I was spiraling and I was like, we're going to have to sell the house. We're not getting any bookings. We're bleeding my, like I, cause I had just quit my job. I quit my job five days before the moratorium went into place. So I quit my job while we were in Joshua tree and I just was so stressed out and worried. So that midterm stay really took us like through some pretty rough patches yeah no i i i also feel you on that i mean that was uh when that moratorium hit i was just like because we like i told my parents okay we're gonna move into this apartment right my wife took a new job uh, yeah. that was commission based right? so like she had to like fill the funnel and i was just like oh we didn't get someone in as soon as you i think we ended up being sometime in i don't know like like late january actually yeah um but it's all you know through the water so now i guess you know now that you guys have been active for a little bit i know we were kind of talking about this before the show but how has it been being a host so far well we've had their next day was also um someone staying midterm and so they've been there for almost six weeks yeah she checks out on april 21st so from december 8th 
through April 21st, we've had 100% occupancy except for two days in between where we changed over guests. So we haven't really done like true short, short term hosting mm. yet. We do have three stays um, lined up that are all short term. So that'll kind of be our first like introduction to it. So as far as being a midterm host, it's amazing. I love midterm. Like <laughs> it's yeah. almost a little bit of a crutch where I wish we could just keep doing it because it's it's amazing. It's so consistent. They don't need anything. It only, you know, it takes a couple of days to work out the new house jitters or new house bugs. But after that, we haven't heard from our current midterm guest at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's uh some of the short term rental like just questions we have now gotten. Like we actually just it's just <laughs> Hannah and I just made a video about it, just the random things that guests will ask. Yeah. I mean, and obviously we're charging a decent amount, right? For the yeah. house. So it's a luxury stay. So I don't know. It's interesting. Just some of the things you have to think about. What kind of, uh, like, what are some of the more, I, I don't know if ridiculous is the right word, but more uh, you didn't expect. Obscure. Yeah, obscure. There we go. That's good. Yeah. Well, like one was like, um, so uh, we like coffee every morning. Will coffee be prepared for us? <gasps> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, 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 oh, and I was like, um, how do we respond to this? Oh, that's crazy. I would not expect that. Yeah, I, I would yeah. never as a guest ever yeah. expect that unless it was like, no, because we, we for our wedding, we got an Airbnb that was like $800 a night. And I didn't expect to. I mean, it's, it did make me think like, oh, should I offer butler service as an add on? Private chef. Yeah, I was gonna say. I don't know. Well, I mean, and I ended up responding. You know, here are if you don't want to prepare it yourself, here are our favorite coffee shops. Mm. And then I actually instacarted uh, some cold brew over to them. Oh. That's very kind yeah, of you. Right, I don't right. know that I would have done that. We're, we're, we're like we're okay to like spend you know twenty thirty bucks here until it gets super host just to get that. Yeah. Yeah. So marketing. Three more months. <laughs> Yeah, or, or I guess I guess that's real operations cost at this point, but yeah. um, I don't know. And how has, uh, I guess, you know, has, what about in terms of projections and things like that? I know that we were, again, talking about this a little bit, but um, I know that Josh Tree is increasingly becoming a more competitive market, right? Do you have any immediate yep. plans on how you might want to continue to tweak the property? Because it's never done. As far as tweaking the property, I think I think we've talked about is possibly doing a hot tub or something. Mm -hmm. Which funny story is our we had an electrician come out uh, to have us install the fridge, and uh, he came out. And he goes, "Oh, I used to live here," and so he used to rent the house, the exact house where we bought it. And he goes, "Hey, back here, there's a built-in hot tub. They just covered it in dirt, so they didn't want to pay the renters the liability insurance for the long-term renters." Hmm. So we've been talking about possibly digging that out and getting a new heat pump. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we just purchased one. I opened up a new zero interest card. Nice. Um, and so there was, and we're actually using this card now to fund this and the other short-term rental in Columbus. Because um, I said, oh, we could buy a hot tub and furnish another unit. Yeah, all of our furnishings are, I mean, our credit score went down like 100 points when we bought this house. Between buying it, renovating it, and putting all, like we still owe 50, Eighteen thousand dollars on our credit card. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that—that's the thing I think that everyone doesn't think about. Like, they hear like, "Oh, it costs eighty grand," and it's like, "Wow, they must just have eighty grand." It's like, no, we have eighteen thousand dollars in credit card debt that we're still paying off. And I took twenty k out of my four hundred one k property. Plus, we saved all our money and lived with six people. Like, that's—it's it, not easy. <laughs> the money doesn't just like. So when you hear about it, you hear about people buying properties. I don't know. I, even for me, I still am like, how do they have this much money? And it's like behind the scenes, we are <laughs> in serious credit card debt. I mean, we're paying it off. Like we have plans to pay it off, but like we have major debt against us right now. We are we're mm -hmm. super leveraged into this property. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, I mean, and that's why I took on a partner is to half that. Right. So where yeah. we could equally put in a little bit that we were okay, you know, and I've, not maybe not for this property for other properties I have pulled out of my out of my Roth and things like that so I feel you on that which is why I opened a zero interest credit card with you know the plans to be charged 15 20 grand which I think is what's on that card right now yep. we have a year to pay that off yep so September <laughs> <laughs> well 
if you guys haven't booked yet, make sure to go onto their Instagram account, <laughs> yeah. House Hacking Masters. And if you're looking for a place in Joshua Tree for a three bedroom, you can book their place and help them pay off their credit card. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We'll add that to the end of our listing. <laughs> help us pay uh, off the credit card. <laughs> I like it. investing isn't easy. <laughs> it's not. It's it really isn't. Um, but I mean, it, like our house hack is not sexy. It's obviously like the least sexy thing you can do is have roommates, but it's mm -hmm. by far the most stable. The I don't, easiest isn't necessarily the right word, but it really is. It's not hard. And we, we like everyone we live with. We have a really good time. We have game nights. We have movie nights. Like Secret Santa. Yeah, we did Secret Santa for Christmas. Like we really enjoy our time with the people that we live with. And our dogs love everybody that we live with. Like there's a lot of positives and it's so secure and stable. Like our short term rental, as sexy as it is it's it makes me really nervous sometimes and it was not an easy process to to get it yeah yeah i mean especially with the whole permit situation and kind uh -huh. of just the things that happen with it it also like whenever it gets stabilized or whenever i can get more units to stabilize other units like that's mm -hmm. when i will feel better but right now i'm kind of just how can we make this consistent yeah 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 um and I guess for everyone who's watching, it's okay if you don't know, because clearly we both don't know. <laughs> yeah, figure it out as we go, falling forward. Yeah. Um, well, uh, before I transition to some of the like, know, like random like marketing or social media questions I have is, any last tips that you'd give for someone about house hacking? We'll start there first. Oh man, I mean, I have a million probably enough where I could rant for way too long, but I think the biggest thing for us that has kept peace in the house because it's a lot of people sharing common spaces is being really, really strict and upfront with your space um, dedication, your, your shared spaces, your yeah. shared spaces. So like everyone has a labeled shelf in the pantry that has their name on it and you don't touch any, you know, you don't touch anything on anyone else's shelf. So if you have special expensive spices, just keep it on your shelf. Cause if it's in the common space, it's open game and everyone knows that. And so same, we just recently did this with the fridge, like the fridge, everyone has a shelf. So we only have one shelf in our own fridge, but it's, it's how it is. Just everything has to be super labeled. Same with bathrooms, like certain people share certain bathrooms. And so if they have guests over, that's the bathroom they use. When we have guests over, they use our master bathroom because I'm not going to allow them to go into other people's um, bathrooms. So just super upfront, like even in the listing, I, I say which bathroom is yours mm -hmm. and that's the only bathroom that you can use. So being really clear about which spaces are whose. Um, and then having the cleaner come through twice a week is mm -hmm. a godsend. Twice a month. Twice a month, yeah, not twice a week. I wish twice a week, twice a month, once every two weeks. Um, that's a godsend because she cleans, they clean um, all of the bathrooms and then the kitchen. So. The shared spaces so there's not one person stuck always scrubbing the toilet mm -hmm. and that, like without that i don't think our house would run as smoothly either and that is that is super smart you're making it easy for them it's easier for you you don't have to police anybody you're not there's no chores list everyone has to check off exactly because i've seen that before where people like have a wheel and like everyone's name and i just know if i was like i put myself in the shoe or mm. in the shoes of the renter if i was just renting a room from someone's house and they had my name on like a, a chore wheel i would be like you're not my mom like i i personally would not like that so yeah I mean, we expect everyone to clean up after themselves in the kitchen the common spaces but I would be pissed if it was my turn to clean the toilet and <laughs> it was after, you know, three other people use the bathroom that I share with. Like, I, I just wouldn't want to do that if I was a renter. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. I mean, is there anything, what would you do different for your next house hack since you guys are already thinking about it? I don't, I guess stick to our, we initially had some standards and then we didn't stick to them like a criteria because we weren't sure we we're going to follow the rooms. So okay. I would say figure out what your what your criteria is for what you want in a roommate tenant, what mm -hmm. house, what whatever you want to call it, and stick to that. Write it down somewhere and look at it and say, sorry, they don't meet that. We can't do it. Whether that's credit score, animals, couples, et cetera, whatever it is, whatever it may mm -hmm. be. Gotcha. Okay. Especially when it comes to the, the people side of the rules, there's no budging on those. Yes, correct. Like a uh, bad tenant is way worse than no tenant. So just if you need to wait, um, we personally didn't have to. We filled our room super quickly, but I would have been much more willing to wait for someone that is going to fit with the vibe of the house. Um, yeah. I also would say no animals. Like we have dogs ourselves, so it makes it a little bit hard. But do I mean, 
our dogs included, like just make a, a house dirtier. A yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. a dirtier house because of that. And you can't control other people's animals, even if they yeah. you know, say that they're good animals or whatever the case is. So I would say the less animals, the better. Not everyone's an animal person either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I guess at this point now that you have, well, six roommates with five rooms, I mean, you know, having one vacancy isn't the end of the world. Exactly. exactly. It almost runs like a multifamily in that mm -hmm. scenario where you have, you know, you still get 80% of the mortgage. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like you guys are, you know, having at least, you know, the, your own personal uh, living situation stabilized, which means that any reserves, if you need them, hopefully not now that your short-term rental is operating, can go into that. Um, switching over to, like, the marketing Instagram side, uh, I mean, curious, is this your only Instagram or do you separate your business and your personal Instagram? Um, I have a personal account, too. So I have my own personal account and then our house account. Um, I started when we first bought this house, I was posting on like my own personal account about all of our like bathroom updates and all this stuff. And I just felt like it was, uh, I don't know if obnoxious is the right word, but I felt like I was putting a lot of this stuff onto my own account. I didn't know mm -hmm. if everyone would be interested and we knew that we would want to invest. And so I just made a separate account for us. Um, and then it's really, I don't want to say taken off. I mean, we have 2000 followers. It's not like we're you know, we're like crazy big, but it's been a, an amazing community. Like we've met yeah. some really, really cool people off yeah. of it. So we, we love our account and then we share it. So like we both have, we both have our own accounts. Cameron does not use his own account at all. <laughs> he is like, he has it, but I, I don't think he uses it. So like we both have our own actual accounts and then we share our house accounts. So like we both can answer messages. I do all the posting, but um, he helps answer messages and comment. And like, it's cool. Cause we, we observe the same, um, the same content. Like we follow the mm -hmm. same people obviously on our account. So it's cool to have like a mutual interest in that. What is the, is, is there a goal behind it all or? No, it was just a cool way to meet other people and to document mm -hmm. what we were doing. And now as you know, I'm a real estate agent. So now I use it. I use both my own account for that too, but it's just a place where I feel like I'm not being really annoying and talking about real estate to people who don't care about it. Cause you can follow my own personal account and not my house account if you want, and then you don't have to hear it quite as much. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it's always interesting, and that's a question I like to give everybody: is do they combine them or do they keep it separate? Um, is yours combined? If, mine is combined. I'm the, I, I'm in the full camp of I think at this point you've now seen, you know, for anyone who's watching this video, you've seen kind of different phases in my life, and I've always kept everything combined, um, and it's you know, the hardest part is to like, not think about what the other person on the screen is thinking about as they're consuming whatever you're posting. And that's like, that's to me is it still gets in my head sometimes every time I post a new video or whatever it is like, Oh, man, like, is there going to be backlash? Is someone going to like, is there a keyboard warrior who's going to come in and be like, <laughs> why do you invest there? Because <laughs> there are. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't dealt with any of that. Like I know some of our we, we have friends that have bigger accounts and you know, I see some of their comments or some of their messages and there is that out there, but we haven't had any of that. Um, probably cause we're small potatoes, but, um, yeah, we, I don't know. We really like our account. It's cool to share it too. I think that's mm -hmm. part of the reason we, we made like a, a house one is cause it's our combined account. And so I wanted a space I could share and like, as much as I would trust him with all my passwords, I don't want to like share my personal Instagram with my husband. <laughs> so it's nice to have like a shared space that we can like communicate with or yeah. communicate with. Yeah. I don't Cam, do you want to combine them all or what? No. <laughs> he doesn't want to see, he doesn't care about my stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, it, it is nice to have boundaries. I mean, I actually, I do post my kids less because of the stuff that I post. And totally. that was a conversation that, you know, my wife and I had was just like, Hey, how much do you want the kids? Like, how much are you comfortable with them being on? And it's, and you know, it, that's just an honest conversation we had. And so, you know, there's a lot of things I wish I could post, but yeah. because of just how public I am pushing things, that was a, a compromise, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I probably feel similar, if, like we have kids too. Well, let's jump into um, kind of last call. Uh, so the final questions I want to ask everybody is, uh, do you have a win and a loss from this week? Oh, from this week. Win is I'm on the last day of 75 hard today. 
Woo! Well, you know, thanks so, for that. <laughs> after this, I know I'm so excited for a beer. I was so bummed we scheduled it. <laughs> I looked at the dates and I was like, oh, I'm one day short. Oh. Uh, well, that's well, that is a win. Congratulations! Did you? I mean, you guys are both already super lean. So, did you pack on some lean muscle mass then, Cam? Is that what happened? Yeah, big transformation. Yeah, I actually oh. put on weight too. <laughs> Man, if only I was able to follow you on your personal account, but I didn't, post, I didn't post anything on there. You wouldn't have seen a single thing. I, yeah. I'm trying to. I want him to post his like photos. Um, I don't know if he will or not, but I. I mean, I I post all the time, but I want him to post his like transformation photos because it is really impressive. It's been very admirable to watch during this time. Look at that brownie yeah. points all around. Yeah. I don't think I've had a big loss yet this week. Oh, um, I had another offer not get accepted for some clients. That's definitely my loss. I mean, it's hard. They offered 40K over with a mm -hmm. little bit of appraisal gap, but someone else offered 45K over with no contingencies. And oh. it's really hard to compete. They're first time home buyers. They're friends of mine. I really like them. I really want to get them in a home. So mm -hmm. that's a third offer. Um, so that's kind of a bummer, but all we can do is just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think what's nice about like this question is that everyone is doing things and a lot of time it's only the the wins the immediate wins are getting posted and so to know that there's a million losses that also go with each win you know is the kind of the hope behind that yeah, um too. okay this one's a fun one uh and this is because it's one you're not drinking yet till tomorrow uh but what is the most memorable drink you've had uh what did you drink and who was it with and what made it so memorable <laughs> <laughs> uh bp con <laughs> bp oh, con yeah. new orleans uh we were with some good friends of ours and uh one of them wasn't vaccinated and you had to be or they had only had one of their rounds or something like that and you had to be double vaccinated to go into all of the bars and so we couldn't go into the bars and so we went if you've ever been to new orleans it's basically just a free-for-all you can do whatever you want in the streets so we went to a uh convenience store that was like just outside the bars just got uh i got a bottle of vodka and then the rest of us split a bottle of sazerac which is like one of their drinks there it's like a it's like a whiskey ride yeah with yeah it's, it's gotcha. like a ride of whiskey but because there's no you're just outside a convenience store drinking out of like these plastic cups that you got from the nice convenience guy and like some questionable ice we drank way too much and uh got very 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 sloshed uh very quickly and it was the day that we had traveled so we'd had like two hours of sleep our time zones were off i think we had barely eaten anything and we oh, got really drunk with some good friends at bp con um so that was really fun <laughs> well that is a good story at least <laughs> it, was, it was really really fun it was a uh, good good bonding um i guess you know I think we know what's next, right? Another house hack, potentially another short-term rental somewhere. But the last question I'll ask you is, uh, what is the favorite piece uh, of advice you'd like to share with someone who's just getting started? Man, that's kind of a tough one. I would probably say, uh, I mean, if they're getting in like the house hacking spaces, just get roommates. I think people like to think of it as a sacrifice, but it's not really a sacrifice. You know, you're kind of, it's a, that's like a springboard, you know, if mm -hmm. you're able to save $800 a month, that's you know, nine, nine grand in a year. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking at house hacking, we think getting roommates is a huge thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a, that is a great stepping stone into investing because you can just keep doing it every year. Um, my biggest piece of advice is probably just to like keep taking steps. Um, even if they're small steps, just keep going because eventually you're going to get to where you want to, but you don't need to look at the big picture and think you need to end up here. Like you can just take small steps to get there. I love it. And where can people find you? House hacking underscore masters. Um, it's our Instagram. Like I said, we share it. So half the time Cameron will be responding half the time I'll respond. You'll never really know. It's a fun, uh, it's a fun, it's a fun surprise. Yeah. It's a fun toss up. Feel free to guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, He's I will working. link their, uh, their profile down below. Um, I guess the, the for reals last question, is there anything, uh, is there anything that you guys are looking for? Or is there something that someone can help you with? Oh, that's a good, well, I am a real estate agent in the Sacramento Roseville area. So if you, or anyone, you know, classic, right. Uh, real estate craze. If you or anyone, you know, is looking to buy or sell in the area, um, especially buy like a house hack. We're really good at house hacking. I love to help people with that. I know what to look for in floor plans and bedroom and bathroom ratios and all that stuff. So 
you're looking to house hack uh, in the Sacramento or Roseville area, I am the girl for you as a real estate agent. So I would love any referrals or any business um, that anyone has to offer. Okay. I like it. Well, Kat and Nicole, thank you so much for jumping on and really diving into, you know, how house hacking can springboard uh, someone's investing. And of course, we're sharing in the same Joshua Tree struggles. So um, we are now going to chat business and maybe one day you'll see us on a future episode, but maybe not. Um, <laughs> but thank you guys so much for coming on and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Josh. Thank it's you. Great talking to you.